Hello there, my fellow reptilian friends, and welcome back to another episode of lore from the Warhammer Fantasy Universe. Today, we're gonna be resuming our learning on a faction that I unfortunately kinda neglected ever since I started covering Warhammer Fantasy many, many months ago. This faction is none other than the Mighty Lizardmen, a faction which I only made two videos on so far. So, like I did with most of the factions already, today I shall start by talking a bit about their military overall, and also cover one of their core races in the form of the Saurus. I am your host, the Slan narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Since the days of their creation, the Lizardmen have been at the forefront of the battle for the survival of the world. Their armies are anchored by savage warriors, spawned for the sole purpose of war, and augmented with titanic reptilian beasts whose tread shakes the very earth. Their enigmatic leaders are mighty wizards which wield magic beyond the ken of mortals. From temple cities and overgrown ruins, they issue forth to defend their ancient civilization, or to unleash their cold-blooded savagery upon the world. Merciless and relentless, the Lizardmen will stop at nothing until all their foes are dead, and the entire world is reordered according to their ancient plan. A host of Lizardmen deployed for battle is a formidable sight indeed. A screen of nimble skirmishers spreads out first, followed by rank after rank of merciless warriors. They are guided by the mightiest of mages, and their war leaders are battle-scarred veterans who will fight to the bitter end. In the air above, winged beasts screech, while out of the jungles stomp hulking reptilian monsters, pitiless savage creatures of a bygone age. Yet the Lizardmen do not go to war for plunder or territory, but instead fight for a higher cause, a world order laid out ages ago by their long-lost cosmic masters. In times of war, a temple city often has a standing army to protect it from harm, or to march out and eliminate their foes on the field of battle. Alongside the mighty Saurus, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, cohorts of skinks are often called upon to aid the army as a force of dedicated scouts and skirmishers, able to navigate the lush jungles of Lustria with great ease. Alongside the skinks come the massive Croxigors, whom are often given the duty of hauling equipment and heavy machinery, or sent into the fray as mighty shock infantry. Yet it isn't these mighty warriors that truly evokes fear upon their enemies, but rather the mighty reptilian monsters which fight alongside them. From the mighty Carnosaurs to the hulking Stegodons, the massive reptilian monsters have proven themselves time and time again as mighty allies of the Lizardman cause. Yet, above even these mighty beasts comes the true power of the Lizardmen. From above the fighting, the mystical Slan unleash magic so powerful that it is likened to that of the gods, hurling mighty lightning storms of massive meteorites against the enemy with an ease that belies imagination. It is said that so long as the Slan leads them on campaign, the Lizardmen cohorts are reassured of ultimate and glorious victory time and time again. The Saurus are one of the core species of the Lizardmen race, created by the Old Ones to be the warriors and guardians of their society. When the temple cities are on the warpath, it is the Saurus who make up the hardened core of their fighting units. This is of no surprise, for the Saurus were made solely for the purpose of warfare and nothing else. They are large and ferocious predator warriors, so single-minded in their duty that they have no concept of thought, individuality, or personality. It is said that the Old Ones cultivated this race of reptilian warriors, although whether they created them entirely, or raised them up from some primordial lifeform of the jungle, is not entirely clear. What is assured, however, is their role and function. In the prehistory of the world, in a time before the coming of the elves or the dwarves, it was the Saurus who pacified the lands, fighting great battles and exterminating entire species in accordance with the wishes of the old ones. As a whole, the Saurus are a ferocious but slow-witted species of reptile, 
bred by the old ones from some kind of prehistoric crocodile or alligator they found in the swamps of primordial Lustria. The creatures they bred were more intelligent than their crocodilian ancestors and could walk upright on two powerful hind legs, leaving their arms free to wield brutal weapons. But they lost the speed that the crocodiles have on all four legs and the ability to swiftly move through water. Unlike their ancestors, the saurus are not birthed from eggs, but spawned in large subterranean caves deep beneath each temple city. They start out as large tadpoles, and they grow continuously over time, feasting upon large insects until they are fully grown. From the moment they crawl from their pools, they are ingrained in knowing how to fight. They arrive not individually, but as a cohort, an entire unit that will stay together for the rest of their lives. All those spawned together bear the same coloration and markings as their brothers. They share a single mindset, acting with an eerie, unspoken synchronicity, the entire formation turning as one, or launching an ambush as one, without a need for so much as a single word. Although they do so infrequently, the Saurus can indeed speak. Their language is little more than deeply growled one-word commands, however. These orders issue forth from the spawn leader, the greatest among their number since they first emerged from the spawning pool. In the course of their long lives of battle, it is not unusual for a Saurus spawning to lose their champion. In such a case, if the unit survives, another of its members will eventually grow into the role, or, as the lizardmen like to say, receive the gifts of the old ones. The Saurus are brutish yet highly disciplined creatures. Even when unarmed, they are very dangerous, as their sharp claws can gouge grooves even into rock, or tear out a foe's throat with ease. Their muscular tails can smash a man's ribcage, and their mouths are full of enormous dagger-shaped teeth. The power of their crocodilian jaws is such that a vicious saurus bite can sever a limb or even crush steel. If not killed outright, those bitten by a saurus bear infected wounds often succumbing to a foul fever and dying within a matter of days. Although unable to master more complicated devices, the Saurus use simple but devastating weapons, wielding obsidian-tipped spears and heavy clubs with jagged stones. Although they can, at times, appear slow of reflex and sluggish, the Saurus can still achieve speeds on the march thanks to the power of their loping gait. Their tough hides bear spines, bony crests, and thick scales that can turn aside all but the surest of sword strikes. For even more defense, Saurus will at times even bear shields, bladed crescents made of the cured hides of the large-scaled beasts which prowl the deepest jungles. The Saurus are cold-blooded and seemingly impervious to pain, able to sustain great wounds and fight on without making a single sound of protest. Indeed, so alien are they that they register no emotion save for a single-minded savagery. A distinct and even more powerful breed of Saurus is known as the Temple Guard. The Temple Guard are a revered and uncommon spawning of Saurus. They were made to protect the Slan Mage Priests themselves and the temple cities in which they dwell. As befits their honored status, the Temple Guard are armed with heavy ornamental halberds and adorned with sacred glyphs. In addition to armor plates of the strongest bronze, the Temple Guard bear distinctive helms fashioned from the horned and crested skulls of Lustria's predatory creatures. Some of the Temple Guard are as old as the temple cities and slum that they protect. However, should one fall in battle, the helm is salvaged by skink attendants, to be placed within the inner sanctum of a pyramid temple. There it remains, a relic, until a new generation of temple guard is spawned to claim the helm of the fallen. It is believed that when a Saurus inherits one of these sacred heirlooms, he becomes imbued with a portion of its predecessor's strength and martial skill. In this way, the temple guard continue to safeguard their charges for eternity, clearly the role for which they were made. As protectors, the Temple Guard are matchless. They stand sentry, silent and motionless, not even blinking their eyes. It has been known for Temple Guard to maintain such a sleepless vigil for centuries, thick layers of dust settling upon their reptilian forms. 
Yet the ever watchful guardians are not immobile statues, and can erupt into sudden violence should they perceive a threat to their charges. Even the skink priests and other attendants to the slan approach with skittish caution, lest they invite the temple guard's response. There is also a strict hierarchy among the temple guard. The youngest spawnings are tasked with the protection of places of power, great constructions that are rarely graced by the presence of a slan, but are still of sacred significance. Older, tougher, and more proven temple guard are sent to watch the outer limits of the lesser pyramids of their own city. Finally, the most ancient of them protect the great temples and the many plaques and relics kept within the crypts themselves. While not protecting their charge in battle, each of the Saurus attends to a specific duty. The Stone Warden guards the Slan's palanquin chamber. The Sentinel of the Blessed is responsible for the safety of the temple's skink attendants. The Relic Keeper stands sentry in the temple city vault, watching over the treasures so valued by the warm-blooded thieves, while the Mortuary Custodian guards the most sacred relics of all, deep within the pyramid's tomb chamber. The revered guardian, inevitably one of the strongest and most savage of the temple guard, stands sentry at the very entrance to the inner sanctum of the slan itself. It is the revered guardian, sometimes also called the master of the 22, who leads the temple guard in battle. Highest ranked of all is the eternity warden, who stands at the master's side, locked inside the star chamber of the slan, as they cast their mind in the furthest reaches of the universe. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the armies of the Lizardmen and the race known as the Saurus for today. Obviously, since I am starting on this topic again, I will return to it in the near future and talk about the other units of the Lizardmen, like the Skinks, the Croxigors, and their multitude of dinosaur-esque war beasts. Are the Saurus among your favorite units of the Lizardmen? What do you like or dislike most about them? As always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.